Warwick Basecamp 2016, and our guest is uh, Juan Alberti. Yes, hello. You know, Polish always get Spanish pronunciation very well. I, yeah, I'm a really? lot of, yeah, there's a lot of, I don't know if you guys know, but there's a lot of Polish people live in Mexico City, so I think that it's easy for them to grab onto the language for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe I can speak Spanish. Yeah, you can try it. Huh. Okay. Uh, you are here as a professor, right? Yes. First time. Yeah. First time. What do you teach right here? Oh, I did something very new to the Warwick Base Camp. I did um, a pedals and effects uh, uh, class, so to speak. I kind of, we, we built a pedal board out of a lot of stuff that Warwick distributes here mm -hmm. in Europe. And um, we constructed a pedal board with stuff from Earthquaker Devices, MXR, uh, Digitech, Keeley, Red Panda, um, and really made a cool pedal board. And then I just showed people the basis, you know, what, how I approach it, how I do it, and hopefully inspired them to to want to like get into sound design for their instrument mm -hmm. because you like to, you like to play with your sound to shift it uh, yes. with the uh, effects and the and my website pedalsandeffects.com I I do pedal reviews as well as like just show people how my perspective on using mm -hmm. effects and shifting the sounds uh, helps you to, to to create your unique style of playing bass um, yeah I mean. You know, I started in the 80s in a band called Racer X, mm -hmm. and it was yeah. very fast shred stuff. And I, you know, it wasn't really like the music I wanted to do, but it's something that was like, you know, I could do it, and, and Paul Gilbert asked me to do it, and so it was really fun when I was younger. And then I, you know, I got like bored with it, and I got into like a lot of more funky bass playing, like maybe like the flat wounds and kind of sound more Motown and funk and stuff. And then I got bored with that, and I started playing fretless, and really loved that. And then I started adding pedals, and then it just keeps evolving. Just because I get bored very easily. So, so it's all, all, all about evolving. Yeah, uh, sound-wise, yes. I mean, I wish I probably should spend more time developing musically, melodically, but you know, skill-wise. Yeah, I mean, technique. I, I I was pretty good on my technique. Like you know, the, when I was at Racer X, they're pretty. You know, the reason I got in that band was not because. It was my kind of music. It was because I was the only bass player who could play what Paul Gilbert was playing on guitar and playing bass. So I had technique. I just, I just didn't have you know, like the musicality. And I was going to music school at the time with him, but the band just started taking off, and so I kind of stopped studying and just went full, full into Racer X mode. You know. You mentioned the the, the, the school. Uh -huh. uh, was it the same school that you were uh, instructor? Later on? Yeah, Musicians Institute, yeah. So that's where I met Paul Gilbert. I met him in 1986 at Musicians Institute, and we started Racer X together. Um, and so teaching is nothing new for you? No, I taught, I taught at uh, Musicians Institute in the 90s, and then I've, I've gone back here and there to Musicians Institute, and then I also t I teach at um, uh, Los Angeles Music Academy, which is in Pasadena, California. Um, so I teach there now, I'll do like a quarterly, actually Jerry Watts um, is going to be here, um, uh, I think this is like in a couple days, but he's the head of the bass department there, so he always brings me in and, and I go and teach either pedals and effects or just, you know, just weird stuff. But you like to teach? I do, I mean I, I really like it when I can, you know, open people's minds up to different things, you know. I mean, you're always going to have a guy who needs to show you how to play arpeggios, music theory, it's, you know, technique maybe or whatever, but I like teaching, like, you know, where you can expand and try to get people being creative. Mm -hmm. uh, and you are, I guess, the gear maniac. Yeah, right? for sure. How many uh, effects do you own? Uh, five, six hundred. Oh, okay. Yeah. And you, so, you know uh, all of them? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, you know, there's probably some, the, the more technical ones are hard to fully go get, unless you have a lot of time, and I tour a lot, so I don't have a lot of time to like sit there and really figure them out, but um, yeah, I have a, you know, I mean, there's not, you know, there's basically, there's delays, there's, there's modulation effects, compressors, sub pedals, distortion, dirt pedals, fuzzes, stuff like that, envelope filters, filters, synthesizer pedals, and then you're pretty much after that, it's like, 
what's in left. And so it's easy to get it. The thing that's happening in pedals is um, they're making digital pedals have a lot of functionality. So you're getting a reverb that does all these weird things, or you'll get a delay that can do all these weird things. Where in the analog world, you didn't, you couldn't do that. Where digital, you can program it and make it do really wild things. So it, that's really the wave of what's happening in effects right now. Okay, so a tricky question. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that you can imagine that you uh, want to do with your sound, but there is no effect, no product that uh, helps yes. you with it? Yes, for sure. So I love the way, I love the way turntable guys, when they scratch on turntables, uh -huh. and then they, they, they basically what they're doing is they're shutting the volume on and off. But when they bring it on, because it's a volume and you always have this a little bit of attack, mm -hmm. and there's no pedal that, like even with a, with a tremolo pedal, there's no, I wish there was a way to make a pedal that when you're playing, it's chopping up the signal, but with all that attack. So you could sit there and play, and it would sound like when a turntable, or even when like they'll do it in a program in a in a in MIDI or something where they'll they'll make something where they can chop up your vocal mm -hmm. and like da, 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 you know if I could do a pedal where you could you know somehow or another program it or play it to where you can chop it up that way I would I wish because I love the way I always use a tremolo where it's just like, da, 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 and I love that sound. But I wish I could affect the rhythm, so it would be like, you know, kind of how turntable is, you know, I would do that all day long on bass. I can do it with a toggle switch, and and like if I flip the bass up and I and I just like on my front list, I just sit there and go, and so it's kind of similar to the turntable, but I want an effect that does that. So I haven't, nobody's made that yet. Uh, maybe try to speak with, uh, for example, or with people uh, to, you know, just I think give them an idea. Of yeah, something. I mean, you tell them the idea, then they're just like, I don't know if anybody, I don't, one, I think they don't know how they would make it, and then two, I don't know if it would sell. I mean, that's what I, the pedal I want, but I don't know if anybody wants it. So maybe just one piece of it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'd be the only one who don't it, for sure. Uh, I want to ask you about the uh, audition uh, for the Mars Volta, because I read somewhere that uh, you auditioned to, to the band, uh, and uh, after the rehearsal, you weren't sure if you were in the band or out of the band. Uh, there was right. no such information. Right. Uh, but I was the only one who auditioned. Nobody else came in. It was just me. So, so it I, was quite obvious. Huh? So it, it was quite obvious that you were in, in the band. I mean, it kind of wasn't. It kind of. I. I just. You know, I asked, like after the first day, I asked Omar, I go, do you want me to take my gear? And he said, no, you can leave it. And then I thought to myself, maybe I should take it, because I don't want some other bass player playing through my gear and maybe blowing it up or something. Mm -hmm. It's all my stuff is vintage. And I was like, nah, I ain't gonna worry about it. And then I started thinking, well, maybe nobody else is coming, because when I left, there was nobody like in line to come into the... So then I left, and then I came back the next day, and, nothing had changed and we start playing again I started thinking are they auditioning anybody else and they didn't it was just I think he just had a good feeling about me and, and then I was in the band for 10 years but it wasn't uh, audition actually it was just a choice perhaps this guy and no one maybe else. I don't know like I'm not him so he would know but I think he I think he just trusted that he was hoping that it was mm -hmm. going to work out yeah because they had a guy that they were using they just they didn't they weren't they knew he wasn't permanent. They knew he wasn't right. And then when I came in, they were just like, "Yeah, this this will work out." And you know, and it worked for ten years. You know. Uh, do you remember something that you uh, have to learn to keep up with the rest of the band, or just everything went smoothly and um, you didn't have to practice too much? I mean, their music's very challenging, like because. You know, there's so many mm -hmm. parts that happen and stuff, but I could always play everything because I, you know, like I said, I can, I have this technique that, that I can play fast and, you know, so that's never a challenge. What was the, always the challenge was memorizing really weird arrangements. And so, yeah, I had to work it fast, you know, that was probably the hardest thing. I noticed that you are speaking uh, about your, your technique, like, like it was nothing, I just had this technique, but uh, I don't know. This is the big technique, this is great technique, so you have to learn yeah. this for years. I mean, you know, what people don't understand, like maybe they don't consider in, in, in instrument playing or whatever, 
all of us have different anatomy. And so I'm very thin and flexible. I mean, look at that wrist, you know, a lot of people's wrists don't do that, like, you know, and so that makes me very limber. You know, well, like it just depends. Like some people, like they, they have a lot of muscle restrictions, so they'll never be fast. And it's not because they can't work at it. Mm -hmm. Their body wasn't meant for their fingers to go super fast. Mine were. So I used to never warm up. I could just pick up the bass and immediately never be fast. Warm up. Yeah, which is bad. As soon as I had, like Paul Gilbert, as soon as you put a guitar in Paul Gilbert's hand, it's instantly fast. Because he's just, a, it's his anatomy, his body, his muscles, everything is just meant to play fast. Well, there's some other guys that it's not easy because they're very they're, they're made differently. So anatomy really helps. I mean, I mean, you look at Felix Pistorius, man. Mm -hmm. His hands are giant. Of course, he can rip on the bass. His hands are just like imagine. I know guys whose hands are so tiny and they play bass, and it's hard for them to do stuff because they're not given the same thing. I mean, I can do a big stretch because I'm super flexible and so look at that but a lot of bass players they can only stretch out their hands like that look at Rocco Rocco in Tower of Power he plays like this and he can cover the bass and play like nobody else but it's a different type of technique you know uh, let's speak about gear once okay. more sure uh, but uh, about guitars this time okay the word is that you, are, that you have a couple of Fender based guitars yeah but the youngest of them is from 86 um, no, I have, my friend list is a 1970, and I have a 1964 Fender Jazz, I have a 1970 Fender Precision, I have a 1973 Fretted Precision, I have a 1986 Squire Jazz bass made in Japan, mm -hmm. um, and then I got, a, now I have a bunch of like weird like 60s Goya Italian basses. I have, I just, I constantly pick up instruments, like I'm always looking for sound. But all of them are from 1970, uh, 60s, 70s, and 80s. Don't yeah. you like the modern instruments? I like the Jonas Halborg bass that Warwick makes, but I've been asking Hans for four years and I still don't have one. <laughs> but supposedly I'm getting one. But um, I really love Jonas. You gotta understand, one thing about Jonas Halberg is that not only is he an unbelievable musician, but he's a very smart mind when it comes mm -hmm. to everything he does in life, and making gear is no exception. So he thinks of, like he he thinks about something and he goes, I can make a better bass, or I can make a better amp, and I can make a better speaker cabinet. So I just trust that he did all the work for me, and he certainly did. His bass sounds awesome in my hands. It sounds awesome in his hands, and he did all the work for me. If somebody said, we want you to make the ideal bass for yourself. I would, it would take me two or three years. But Jonas did all the work for me, so I don't have to do it. So I, I really think, I mean, it's expensive, so a lot of guys probably won't ever go out and buy them, but like people are buying Frideras and, and all It's expensive, but it serves you for years. For but his, Jonas' bass, like, I, if, he, if he ever quits music, he better, he better sell me those basses. I'll kill him if he does. Those bases are his <laughs> fretted. We have, we have it on the yeah, his fretted and his fretless. I want both of his bases, man. Okay, so we have recorded everything's uh, everything's on the internet right now. So okay, he won't do with her bass anything else. <laughs> uh, so uh, the Mars Volta is over. Yes, There's no more. Mm -hmm. uh, you are focusing on on playing with uh, Omar Rodriguez Lopez or. No, I have my own band. I have a new band coming out. Um, my band is called Halo Orbit, and it's a three-piece. Um, it's Mark Julian on drums. He's right now on tour with um, Brad Meldow and John Schofield, um, but he's also the drummer on the last David Bowie record. So he's the drummer. And then my friend Sugar, she's from Japan. She plays guitar. She's in a band from Japan called Buffalo Daughter. And then I play bass, and you know we all play keys and stuff. But it's just a three-piece. It has vocal, but it's a lot of instrumental as well. Kind of along the lines of like a band called Battles, or you know, you know, there's a couple of prog things, but there's a couple of hip hop things, a couple of drum and bass things. It's you know, it's a it's like you know something that I find very interesting. So we we actually have a record coming out in Japan in December, mm -hmm. and it'll come out in the U.S. following that. And it's on Europe. Uh, yeah, it'll be through Alpha Pup, which is Alpha Pup is the biggest, the big umbrella that puts out 
Brain Feeder, which is Flying Lotus is labeled Thundercat. Um, and he also does Alpha Pump, which he does a lot of hip hop, but mm -hmm. um, one of the bands that he's putting out. And so, yeah, it'll be out next year, and hopefully we'll get on some festivals in, in Europe next year. We'll see, fingers crossed, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Halo Orbit. Halo Orbit, Sounds yeah. very cosmic. I mean, it's 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 pretty trippy, and I, I you know I do some stuff on there that I haven't done on any other band, so that's my band. That's what I'm really excited about. But I'm still I'm touring right now with Juliette Lewis. She's a, a awesome singer. Uh, she's also a well known actress. And then um, I was I, I started that back in April, and Brad from Rage Against the Machine was on drums, but he's on he's in Prophets of Rage now. So now we have a new drummer, but. Um, and then I'm also in Deltron 3030, which is a hip hop mm -hmm. group that has Del the Funky Homo Sapien, Kid Koala, Dan the Automator, who runs everything. So we still do shows. I toured with them for like two and a half years, and then after Mars Volta, and then we're still doing one offs, and then we're gonna they're finishing up the new record, start touring that. I also do a lot of hip hop right now, which I'm lucky that I've always wanted to do hip hop more than rock. But I never had the chance because I was always in rock bands and touring and stuff. But now I've been doing a ton of hip hop. So I did the new Dr. Octagon record, Deltron 3030 record. I played with this rapper out of Los Angeles named John Wayne, who's unbelievable. I'm super excited. I, I write John Wayne. John Wayne is his name. And I write a lot of stuff with them. And I play bass. And uh, 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 Damo from uh, Odd Future, his own solo career, I play on, on his stuff. Um, I'm supposed to go back to LA and do some stuff on Tyler the Creator's record. So um, right now I'm really, you know, it's just awesome that I get to do hip hop because I, I listen to hip hop more than I listen to any other style of music. So, so you're pretty busy and you still have the time to play with all these effects. So. Yeah, so on my website, pedalsandeffects.com, sure. You know, uh, I have to ask you about it. Yes, uh, sure. About the Racer X. Okay, yeah, sure. Uh, is there any chance uh, of a new <laughs> album or just some shows? To do? No, you never it. know with Paul because Paul's a very busy guy. He, um, it, I just was texting with Scott, the drummer, the other day. Um, I never know. Like he's, you know, he, he's doing his own thing, and, and you know, he has hearing issues. So I think that he kind of doesn't tour as much as he mm -hmm. used to. But um, I would always do it because I started the band with him. You know, he and I, the original members of the band. So um, I mean, it was just me and him starting it, really. So he and I. You know, still have a good friendship. I probably will see him next month when I'm. He lives in Portland, Oregon, so I'll probably see him next month. Maybe I'll ask him and see what he's up to. Yep. And last question. Yeah, sure. Uh, once again, maybe a little tricky. Uh, when you are thinking about new music, uh -huh. uh, hip hop, jazz, rock, whatever it is, uh, what is the most important thing? Yeah, that's creative creativity and imagination. I mean, that's. <clears throat> I mean, I think I think I, the reason I still have a career because I don't, I can't, I'm not a fundamental bass player. Like I'm not like they got a lot of the guys here who can sight read, read chord charts, play over chords, do jazz, do R and B, do I don't. I if you hire me, you hire me because I have a sound, and so what comes with that is that I have to constantly innovate and constantly do things that people aren't doing. So that's how I get work. And so it's the only reason I'm still here is because of my creativity and my passion for evolving and trying to evolve the instrument. I mean, my clinic yesterday was, I was telling these people, like, definitely learn what they're all teaching you here, but you've also got to try to stay hip and you've got to, you've got to roll with the times. I, I'm not one of those guys, I, you know, being around guys my age sometimes, it's, it's kind of a drag as you hear these guys, oh yeah, the young kids, they don't do this and that. And I hated it when I used to hear it when I was young. And I don't, I don't, I don't look at it this way. You know, the, whatever's happening in your music is supposed to be happening. Mm -hmm. And so I just support it and I find what I like in it. And you know, I'm not, I don't go back and listen to old records. I don't go, oh, I gotta listen to Led Zeppelin every day. I don't, I listen to new music. I, it's all I'm interested in is, Evolution. I don't care about what's happened in the past. I mean, it's nice. I went, I lived it, and I, and hey, and I still listen to it sometimes. But I really listen to whatever's happening now. I want. I just think it's more exciting. So I think creativity coming from that angle, it's about that. It's just trying to stay relevant and trying to just put out new ideas out to the musical world. Yeah. Yeah. 
the folks who heard them and creativity, passion and evolving yes. for keywords for music. It was a pleasure. Thank you, man. You awesome, man. Thank you very Good much. Good interview. Great interview, actually. Thank you.